All right, we're back with another uh, another predictions video for UFC 251. I am joined by Joseph Shaw, and we're going to go through uh, starting from the bottom, and we're probably going to analyze the main card a little bit more uh, in depth. Um, so we'll start with the first the first fight there, uh, Davy Grant and uh, and Martin Day. What uh, what do you have for that uh, for that fight? I have Davy Gray winning. So I think. I've seen more of him, and I think he looked really good in his last fight against Grigory Popov in Russia. And even though he's not got the best of records, I think that will give him a lot of confidence going to someone's backyard and winning. So hopefully he can take that confidence and beat Martin Day. But I do think Martin Day lost a very close fight in his debut, I think, in China. I think it was against Ping Yuen Liu or something like that, I think his name was. So he's decent. He's not fought. Well, since late 2018 now, so I think the most recent activity should go to Davy Grant. I think I think he will get a decision win. Yeah, I have uh, I have Davy Grant. I just think that the experience uh, in the in the UFC is going to go a long way. You know, I think there's a difference between competing on a local circuit versus uh, in the UFC. I know it's an empty arena and all that stuff, but there is that pressure of competing for the biggest organization in the world. And I just think Davy Grant's been around for a lot longer, and I think that uh, that experience is going to play uh, a huge, huge factor in this fight. Um, and then women's bantamweight division, Carol Rosa and Vanessa Mello. I don't know a whole lot about these two, if I'm 100% honest. Um, so it's more of a coin toss for me. Um, but how do, you, uh, how do you see this fight going? Uh, I think Carol Rosa wins that fight because... Um... She looked pretty decent in her debut, I think. I can't remember who she fought. But, and I know Vanessa Miller got stopped very quickly in a recent fight, so I think those are wins. Yeah, I'm in the same same boat. I just think that, uh, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about, about either one, but I do think that that, uh, that she looked more, more impressive in her last fight, and because of that, she's going she's gonna to come up with the, uh, with the victory. And then who is after that? We have uh, Rulian Pava and Zhalgas Zhumagulov, however you pronounce that. Uh, he was supposed to fight in Kazakhstan, but obviously things kind of fell through with that card. Um, and so uh, he's getting put on this card. Rulian Pava is a ranked 25er, which doesn't mean a whole lot because there's only like 15 of them anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I think it's good that they're going to start building the division. Um, what do you have uh, for this fight? I think it's 50-50 because I think Paeva looked really good against Mark De La Rosa, but again, that's Mark De La Rosa. He's been stopped three times in a row now. Um, and Zargas has got some good wins over Tage Yun Bekov, who's, made, who's meant to make his debut a couple of weeks ago, but a lot of people say he could have lost that one. But I think Paeva wins just on the fact he's younger and he's got a lot more experience. And I don't think we've seen his full potential yet. He's only 24. He looked very good against Kai Kara fans, probably gave him one of his toughest fights. So I think Paeva just nicked it by both position wins. I, uh, I'm going the other way on this one. I, I, you know, this one's one where I was back and forth, and I, I do think Paeva is a very, very dangerous fighter. But like you said, he is only 24. He's got a lot of room for growth. Um, Jalgas, not many people have heard of him. I didn't even hear of him until, <laughs> until he was signed. And uh, I just think that he's got... Got a lot more tools. He has some big wins outside the UFC, and uh, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on him because they, they don't know a whole lot about him. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to go with him. That being said, I really have no idea where to go for this because it's hard to tell what level he's actually at until he fights in the UFC. It's a really good fight, to be honest. I think that um, there's a lot of these fights where people might not know who they are, but after the night run, they will do because they might put fight of the night performances in. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think this one has uh, a lot of potential for being, um, whether it be fight of the night or, or uh, at least exciting, because they do have a lot to prove. And I think everyone in that division does. And they're fast, they're quick, they're they're energetic. And I think that's going to go, uh, you could, this one could be a, a shocker. And I think it really could be a very exciting fight. And then we've got uh, Marcin Tabura. Um, experienced, he's fought a lot of high-level guys. Um, he Got a bounce back win last time out, and he's fighting Maxim Grishin, who's stepping in and on short notice um, as well. Um, how do you how do you how do you see this one going? Probably just 
to Bora because I don't know much about Gushin. I know he fought in PFL and I think he did well over there, but I've seen more of Tabora. He, I know he lost to Augusta Sakai, but he's coming off a, a, a good win. I think if Grisham had a full camp, he probably would have won, because I think he's, he's got more experience overall, but he doesn't have as much UFC experience, which is a bit of a difference. Yeah, I, I went the other way for, for I don't know, I just I haven't been impressed with Tabora in, in a little while. Um, I mean, his victories now don't even seem as impressive as they once did. Um, I don't. Let me check here. His last win was, I mean, win over Stefan Struve and Andre Arlovski. At the time, they seemed like big wins, but you know, looking back now, Stefan Struve's been struggling. Andre Arlovski as well. Um, so I just think that uh, you know those wins that were once impressive don't no longer seem that impressive. So for that reason, I'm going to go with Grishin. Um, but uh, another exciting fighter uh, in Grishin coming out of Russia um, where mm. you really don't know what these guys can, can do, right? Like you, you look, there's either, like you look at Amari Akhmedov or all the Nurmagomedovs or Ram- Ramazan Aviv, these Russians could really be very impressive or they could be not very good. So I think there's a, this is going to be an exciting, uh, exciting fight. I think also the fact that he's in the heavyweight division where there's a lot of beatable fighters in, I think he doesn't have to be awfully that overall skilled, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. if you have power, that's going to get you a long way in division. Or if you can just have a higher H IQ than most of the other guys, it'll get you ranked, ranked yeah. in the top fifteen easily. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the next one is another debuting Russian in Roman Bogatov, who is fighting, in my opinion, one of the greatest lightweights that we ha- that most people haven't heard of in Leonardo Santos. Um, how do you uh, how do you see this one going? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Bogatov just basically on a pure um, him just being more active because I know how good Santos is. I know he's on the seven fight win streak, but he's not fought in like two years, and he was against DB Ray. And uh, Bogatov is ten and zero. He's got a lot of very, he's fought very good opponents because he's come from M1, which is which don't give easy fights at all. And I think the only problem is that he's a wrestler and Santos is a very good fighter on the ground, so he might struggle there. So I think it'll be more of like a stand-up fight. I don't think any of them will want to test each other's ground game. Yeah, I think uh, I think this fight's another one that's really, really exciting because I think Santos's strengths actually kind of make Bogotov have to adjust. Uh, you know, his he's got great grappling, but Leonardo... Uh, Santos is a fourth degree black belt. Um, he submitted George St. Pierre in a grappling tournament. Most people don't even know that. Like, I think that's that's crazy. Uh, he's finished Kevin Lee, Anthony Rocco Martin. And you think about what those guys are doing now. Like, it just shows how good Santos really is. Uh, even though he's on the wrong side of, wrong side of, <coughs> wrong side of 40 now, uh, mm-hmm. I really think that he's uh, he's really coming into his own. I think this layoff actually might benefit him. Um, and I think we're going to see that on um, uh, on Saturday. The only thing that concerns me is what happens after the fight. Like, his, the only thing consistent about him has been he wins, but then he disappears for like three or four years. So hopefully this fight will uh, will like spark something great for him and he stays active. Uh, but like you said, Bogotov's undefeated, and you can never overlook undefeated fighters. Uh, usually they're undefeated for a reason. <laughs> And then we've got uh, Finnish, the Finnish sensation in Makwan Amir Khani and uh, Scotland's own Danny Henry. Uh, I'm sure part of you is, wants to root for Danny Henry. <laughs> yeah, I'm rooting for Henry, but I'm not sure you'll get it done. I think Amir Khani will do it because he's fought better opposition, even though when he's took that step up, he has lost. He's been a He's been a very strong fighter in the middle of the top 25 to, um, in the division. I mean, anyone below that is going to lose to him, and I'm not sure whether Henry is there yet. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at their... They're both coming off losses. Um, Henry lost to Dan Ige, which, in retrospect, doesn't seem so bad. Uh, Makwan lost to Shamburgos, which also, in retro, retrospect, doesn't seem uh, too, too bad. Um, but like you said, I mean, he's just fought... So many great guys, Jason Knight, Chris Fishgold, uh, Mike <laughs> Wilkinson, 
he lost to Arnold Allen too, but that was a split that went to split, and we really see how good Arnold Allen actually is. So I just think that I just think Amir Khani uh, has more tools to get it done as well. He's got great submissions. He's got he's great on the feet as well. Um, so I think uh, I think Amir Khani wins it. Yeah, just the yeah. last thing. Daniel Henry's quite decent on the ground as well, isn't he? So I'm thinking if he can wear him out because. M- Amir Khan has struggled a lot with his cardio, so if he can take him down and keep him down in the early couple of rounds, he might be able to gas him out, he might be able to finish him. He has got wins over Hakim Dorodo, who's a very good fighter, so he can pull it off, I just think it might be too, too soon for him. Yeah, and I mean, what that's actually a good point, because they are fighting, uh, both of them are travelling to a fight, and I think that plays a huge factor too, is... What's the weather going to be like there? I know they say they have some air conditioned or some 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 cooling or whatever the heck they're going to do there in that uh, in that arena. But you know the it's really hard to get rid of all that, especially in the lead up of the fight. How are you going to stay away from the heat? How are you going to stay? Um, how are you going to adjust to, to that weather there? So uh, I think that's actually a good point that I hadn't even really considered, and I think that favors Danny Henry more than it does Amir Khani. And then we've got uh, Zaleski, Dos Santos versus Muslim Salikov. I love this fight. So much. <laughs> I, I do too. I like this. Uh, I like this fight. Uh, Zaleski, obviously, he was ranked at one point. Salikov, very, very dangerous. Um, what's your uh, What's your thoughts? I'm probably going to go with Muslim Salikov as a, I think he might be an underdog, and I think yes, the opposition he's fought is not very good. But I think he's improved a lot since his loss to Alex Garcia, which really is not someone he should be losing to. And he's 35 now, so I think it's his time now to go on a roll and make sure he gets into the top 15 with a win, which may make him, they could do him versus Magni if he beats him. So, Aleski de Santos is very good. He, I don't think he looked that good against Contento. I thought he won, but a lot of people thought he lost that fight. And he didn't look good against uh, Li Jiang either. So, I think on recent form, I think Sarkov will win, but it could be the case of him not fighting this kind of opposition before because Dos Santos has been with some very good guys and he might be able to use that experience. And he's got the skill set to win easily, so it'll be a very close fight, I think. If Salikov doesn't blow himself out early, which is a possibility, he could like, be so excited and try going over to finish, which I don't think he would finish him. But if he keeps his core, cool, I think he wins. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a really, really hard fight to predict. I've been going back and forth on both fights. And, uh, I mean, Dos Santos, when he's on, he looks insane. I mean, he has wins over Omar Yakhmedov. He has wins over uh, Lyman Good, Max Griffin. Um but like he said, he didn't look great against Kunchenko. And I think someone who can do a great job of nullifying his game is, is Salikov. Um, and he got knocked out by Li Jingliang. That being said, I don't think Salikov has the, the hands, I guess, to put away uh, uh, Zaleski Dos Santos. Not saying it won't happen, because that's <laughs> very possible. Uh, but I just don't think it, he does. And I think that even though he may weather the storm and may start the, a comeback, I think I think uh, Zaleski has the ability to, to, to win the first two rounds, and I think I think for that reason I'm going to go with Zaleski. But this one's either way, man. It's a toss up. It's some of these fights are really close. Usually with the fight night cards, it's like one's kind of obvious. With this one, it just seems like either one of either fighter really has a chance to win. I think, like you said, I don't think. Salikov would knock him out by punches, but he's got a lot of like spinning uh, kicks, hasn't he? So he could catch him with something crazy like that. I think if anything, if he's going to knock him out, it's going with a head kick or something like that. I don't think he's going to knock him out with his punches. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, they're both exciting, which is which is what I like. And I think this one could be another sleeper for fight of the night. Um, but Dos Santos has fought higher level opposition he's been in the top 15 he's been around a little bit longer and i think that's going to play play a factor but you know one thing 
I've been saying this a little while about these these Russian fighters that have two or three fights in the UFC. Is you never sleep on them. Um, they're really good. A lot of them come from from years and years of combat experience, and uh, they've they've seen seen it all. And it's kind of hard to put them away. I mean, you see that with even um, even in the heavyweight division, like Alexei Olenek, it's so hard to beat that guy. Um, mm -hmm. And every all these these Russian guys who come in, they're They've seen they've seen everything, so it's it's hard to it's hard to root against them. But uh, I don't know. I've seen Zaleski for so much longer, and I think that's probably why. It's just I've seen so much more of them that uh, that I'm leaning that way. Yeah, these are like two guys who've just flown under the radar. I always feel like these are the guys who are the most dangerous. Like you see this a lot now. Like you guys who've got like nine losses, who are slowly creeping up. I think it feels like. A lot of people put a lot of pressure on people being known and not getting any name out there. But I feel like the people that don't have the name out there are more dangerous fighters because no one ever mentions them and they slowly yeah. creep up and avoid them. So, like, Mirab was meant to fight Stamen last week, in the next week, and mm. Stamen apparently refused him. So, it's another guy who doesn't really get mentioned and I feel like they will get their due, both of them, and I'm probably going to change my pick now. I think Dos Santos will win. I think, I think... <laughs> I just think he's fought better opponents. Yeah, be very close. And then uh, this is this next fight is actually a great example of that. One guy that we're all familiar with. Uh, he's fought for a title, Vulcan No Time Uzdemir, versus a guy only really MMA diehards know about, but we've all been watching him for a little while. And Yuri Prochaska. Mm -hmm. um, he's from Czech Republic, which isn't uh, necessarily known as an MMA country. But, uh, but boy, is he exciting, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. I think Mahmoud Miodev trains out of the Czech Republic as well. So I think, I'm not sure that they train out of the same gym. But I think, yeah, he wins. I know I've only seen him against Maldonado and C.B. Dolloway, and I know them two aren't in their primes anymore. But I feel like he's not really got anything to lose in this fight. I think he find a ranked guy. And... He just has to go out there. He's got nothing to lose. He wins. He gets. He also makes top ten, isn't he? Yeah. He probably will get a top ten ranking. I think all the pressure is on Vulcan because he's like thinking, "Who is this new guy? Why is he coming in and trying to take my plates from me?" So that might motivate him, and that's might make him the win because he's a lot more motivated. But I thought he lost to Rakic. It was a close fight, but. He didn't really impress me in that fight, so I'm not sure whether he's still at his very top of his game. But I think, yeah, he will win by decision, probably. I don't see that many knockouts in this car, to be honest. Yeah, I like, uh, I really like this fight, and it's it's hard because Vulcan is hit or miss, really. Like, I mean, he beat, it's not on his record. But he beat Dominic Reyes. Like, I think it's consensus. Everyone agrees he beat Dominic Reyes. And I think if that Vulcan shows up, Yuri could be in for a long night. But then at the same time, he lost to Anthony Smith quite decisively. Um, and he didn't look that impressive in that fight. So it's, it's hard to predict with him. I was really hoping he would take a fight against maybe like a, a Tiago Santos or uh, something like that. Um, so this is like a step back for him. And like you said, he's got everything to lose. He loses this fight. And I mean, you're losing to an unranked light heavyweight. Uh, he's many fights away from a title shot, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. That being said, I really feel like, and uh, my family lives in Switzerland, so that might be a little bit of a bias there. Uh, he's, uh, he's from Switzerland. And he's the only fighter in the UFC from Switzerland. And uh, somehow I've got to, I still have to support him. <laughs> and uh, he's got the best nickname in the game too which helps so uh i'm gonna go with vulcan um i don't think he finishes yuri but i do think he wins uh, a close decision another toss-up controversial then as the uh, of the prelims yep that's the last fight of the prelims yeah and then uh and then we go to in my opinion the hottest fight in ufc history Amanda Hivas versus Paige Van Zant. I like this fight. Uh, I like both their Instagrams. I like their Twitters. I like everything they post. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, who do, who do you have for this one? Paige, this may be Paige's last fight in the UFC, too. I think Hivas think... pretty easily because I think she's looked really good. She's got wins over Mackenzie Dern. 
Ron DeMarcus and Emily Whitmire. So I think her skill set is very good. I know she's moving up her division, but I feel like this is a very winnable fight for her. And I think it's another chance to be another golden girl of the UFC, kind of, because she's kind of like been the opponent of the big promotion, promotional push. Like Dern was the biggest promotional punch for the uh, strawweight division. So I think she will, have, she will upset a lot of people again. And I think she will go undefeated in the UFC up to 4 now. Yeah, I really like Amanda Rebus. I think she looks very, very impressive. Um, and Paige really hasn't impressed me. I know she has that, that switch kick win over Beck Rawlings, but she really hasn't gotten a big name win, in my opinion, since Felice Herrig. And that's ages ago. <laughs> so uh, Rachel Ostovich, with all due respect, I don't think uh, Rachel Ostovich uh, is, a, is as big a name as Amanda Rebus, and I don't think she's nearly as talented. So I think... And like you said, I think Amanda Rivas winning this fight, she really gets to kind of take something that's she's going to be the golden girl of the UFC. Like she's this is like passing the torch. Like Paige mm-hmm. is going to hand off. Like I'm the prettiest girl in the UFC, and now it's going to be Amanda Rivas. So I think uh, I think actually I think I mean, Amanda Rivas is going to win comfortably. I don't think she finishes Paige because we've seen how tough Paige is in the past. I don't think uh, I don't think she she was able to finish her, but uh, I do think she wins it uh, via decision. Was Paige's last fight, Rich Rostrovich, yeah. in Derry last year? Yeah, she's out, hasn't she? So, and Rebass has been a lot more active, so I think that goes a lot of well for her as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a while, and she's. I found since Dancing with the Stars, really, she hasn't even. She's almost had one foot out the door. Like she hasn't. Uh, I know she's had the broken arm and all that stuff, but. <laughs> It just really doesn't feel like that's her main focus anymore. And usually when your focus switches from MMA to something else, usually good things don't follow. You saw it with Tyron Woodley. Um, and I feel like uh, same thing with Paige. Um, I don't think she's really as committed. And maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think she's as committed as she used to be. And I think that's going to show on Saturday night. Yeah. Then we, yeah. then we have the last non-title fight of the card. Jessica Andrade, Rose Nama Yunus, the rematch. How do you have it? Um, I think Rose wins because I think she was winning the first fight before she got slammed. So I think Rose will... F- um, and she's had a big layoff and I think that w- with some fighters that pays off a lot because I think if you're in that bubble of like, losing and, you need to, and you've just lost your title after dominating, they, you know, beating one of the dominant women in Joanna Yudicek, I think she needed that time off, and I think now she'll just come back and more motivated than ever. And Andrade might still be suffering for a loss against Zhang because she lost in pretty bad fashion. So it'll be interesting to see if she's got over that yet and doesn't like freeze in the moment again. This is another really big fight for her to get back, maybe get back to a title fight if she if she wins, so that's always there because she's a big enough name, I think, for them to do a rematch, even if it, she doesn't deserve it. But you never know. Yeah, I, I hate this fight. Uh, I hate rematches unless they're for a title, and even for a title, I'm like, we've already seen this. Um, that being said, I think this might be the only time in a long time that I've, I think the, the person losing that lost the first fight is going to win the rematch. And like you said, I thought Rose was not only winning that fight, I thought she was dominating until she got slammed. Um, and I think she has learned a lot from that. And I think she learned that, you know, even though you're winning a fight doesn't mean you can't get slammed or knocked out. And uh, I think that's going to, I think she's going to win very, very, I think she's going to dominate. I don't think she finishes on Draj. I think she's just going to dominate uh, for five rounds and it's going to, or three rounds, sorry. Um, I think it's going to be a comfortable win. And I think this is actually going to slide her into a title shot um, because realistically, uh, there's, you know, unless Tatiana's back, uh, I think she's, she's, I think she's next in line. So I think Rose may actually get another title shot uh, with this win. Yeah, I think Rose is a big enough name as well. Like she, a lot of the casuals will know who she is. Yeah. And I think a lot of casuals will know who Zhang is because obviously she's the first Chinese champion. 
a massive deal was made about that and choosing probably one of the fight of the years, maybe behind Hooker and Poirier. So I think that's a huge fight to make. And I think the UFC will be kind of pulling for Rose. I know you shouldn't really be saying that, but I think that's will make them the most money other than a Andrade rematch, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if Andrade wins it, I don't think she deserves a rematch either. So I think it, Rose is it's probably better for the UFC. Like you said, I think Rose versus Whaley, imagine the you could put that in China, you could put that in the States. It doesn't really matter where you put that. That's going to sell it in Arena. Uh, I love that fight. And I think Whaley, after, especially after Whaley's last performance, I think she could sell it Arenas anywhere. Yeah. Then we have... Uh, First title fight of the night, Piotr Jan versus Jose Aldo. I hated this fight at first. I love it now. Oh, what's your thoughts? I do like it. I just don't think a guy coming off two losses should be getting a title shot. I, th- I know he's a legend, and I know the fight is really good. I've, I think it's a fantastic fight. I just think under the circumstances, you could have given at least Aldo another fight to get a win, maybe against Pedro Munoz if they didn't book him with Edgar. I think that would have made some sense. Um, but we've got this fight now, and I think it's a very good fight. And I think Jan wins round four. I think he'll be a bit too much for him. Cause I think he's got a very good gas tank. And I think if, if he can survive the early onslaught from Aldo after round two, I think Aldo's got a chance of gassing out, especially with him making a make his weight cutting under these circumstances. I know he made weight against Mara Marais and he made it really well, but I just feel like with him going to Brazil a week before, and I just thought he's had a lot, that's quite a lot of distractions as well, but I hear him going to Las Vegas and then flying to Abu Dhabi. I think that for such a big guy, for such a big fan to me, he, was, he might struggle. So I think Jan will take advantage of that and stop him on for. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's how a lot of people have it. And I've been having it. I've been going back and forth on this one. I look at Jan's wins and like he's dominated, but he's been tagged before. And uh, I mean, his win over Uriah Faber, I don't think that warrants anybody a title shot. Um, and I think he's great. I think he's amazing. But I don't think I don't think this is the actual Bantamweight championship. Like, I feel like Sterling has to be in that fight. Jose Aldo's coming off two losses. Uh, last performance, I thought he won it. Um, and I think Marlon Marais is... I think Marlon Marais is the number one Bantamweight in the world uh, outside of Aljamain Sterling. Um, he was beating Henry Cejudo. Um, so for Jose to beat him, in my opinion, beat him, I have uh, I have a Jose Aldo winning it. Um, and I don't... I think it might be because I, was, I watched him finish Jeremy Stevens right before this video. Uh, but uh, I think I think Aldo's going to get it done. I don't know how, uh, but I think Aldo's going to win it. And then the co-main event: Max Holloway, Alexander Volkanovski. Uh, I hate I hate this rematch. I thought Volkanovski won decisively in the first one, so let's run it back again. Why not? Uh, how do you how do you have it going? Yeah, I think yeah. Alex is right as well. I think, like you said, he won quite easily. I thought you might have won four rounds out of one. Some people say three, two. Either way, Holloway lost. So, um, but I just think the featherweight division is so weird because I don't think any of the guys below Holloway deserve a title shot just yet because you've got yeah. Green Zombie who lost to Yair Rodriguez. He's coming off a win over Frankie Edgar, who's now a bantamweight. Um, you've got to beat who's not gone five rounds yet, so you can't really give him a title shot. Faber is coming up. Um, I lost to Max Holloway, and he's not fought since. So I think the rematch made a lot of sense. I think Alex yeah. wins by decision. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, they're like you mentioned, they're all. I mean, you got to beat Korean Zombie. Yair and uh, Ortega, who none of those guys can really make a case yet, um, like you said. And I think, as much as I hate this fight, I think uh, I think it's the one to make. Um, and what what interests me though is that Holloway hasn't been working with coaches; uh, he's been doing it at home, and that scares me um, because I've 
I've interviewed Trent Gurdum. I've interviewed Josh Kulabau. And uh, they've been training. They've been going hard with Alexander Volkanovsky. And uh, I'm, I think he's, from the sounds of it, I think uh, Volkanovsky is going to come in. And I think he's going to look to finish Holloway. Uh, that being said, I don't think anyone finishes Holloway. So I think he's going to dominate uh, to a decision. And uh, yeah. so I, I have Volkanovsky. It's going to be interesting, though, because what, what does Holloway do now? If he loses back-to-back fights to Volkanovski, do you, do you think he goes up? I think so, but there's still a lot of good fights for him. You got you can fight the Korean Zombie, you could fight Yair, and you could fight Javit if you wanted to. I think there's still a lot of good fights. I don't think his career would be over at featherweight if he can still make, if he can still make that division well. If he can't, he could go to 155, yeah. Yeah, I just think it's going to be... I think. It's, it's, he'll never get a title shot again unless Volkanovski loses it. You know, usually when you lose back-to-back fights to the champion, it's hard to get that third shot. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever seen a guy get three shots at a at the same title uh, cha- or uh, same same belt holder. So uh, it, it'll be difficult. Um, so I think if he loses, I think he moves up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've got. Kamaru Usman, and this is the reason why we held on and we didn't record this video sooner, it was because we felt like something was going to happen. Uh, mm. Sure enough, uh, Usman is fighting Jorge Masvidal, who steps up on six days' notice. He's uh-huh. eating pizza at the airport. Uh, <laughs> he looks like he's way overweight, but uh-huh. he's showing up in bathrobes. What's your, what's your thoughts on Jorge Masvidal taking this fight to begin with, and then your thoughts on the fight? Um, he saved the card because I think yes, it's a bigger fight than Gilbert Burns versus Usman, but I don't think it's the better fight because I don't think I think Usman wins quite easily unless Masvidal goes out and does what he did to Askren or does what he does to Till, which I don't really see happening because I don't think Usman will trade with him like he did against Covington because he won't he doesn't fear Masvidal's takedowns. While with Burns, I think it would have been more of like a safer fight for Usman. Terms of he wouldn't be engaging with the takedowns, and I feel like it'd be more of a tactical fight than this one. I think this one will be more boring, but I think he'll grind it, grind Masvidal out, probably win up 50 45 decision. Probably, I just don't, don't see Masvidal winning. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I don't, even though it's on six days' notice, I don't think Masvidal gets finished. I just think he's too tough, he's too durable. Um, and I mean, it's been years since he's been finished too, which doesn't help. Uh, mm-hmm. As for Usman, I mean, he showed that he can beat. He dominated Tyron Woodley, which now doesn't look as impressive. Uh, he beat Colby Covington, but I thought he was losing that fight. Um, if he was fighting Burns, I had Burns winning it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think I think I had Burns winning as well because I think they obviously trained together, and I think. Um, Burns might have not took the fight if he didn't see something in Usman because they've always been sparring each other and I think Burns looked really good against Woodley and I think he's one of these guys as well who slowly crept up the division and a lot of people haven't really mentioned him until the Damian Maia win and a lot of he's, he's been known for taking short enough this fight and I think with him four weeks from his last fight he would have been with a lot of confidence and I thought this was an excellent fight for him and hopefully he doesn't get shifted now and they probably did a Covington fight probably with him for number one contender. Yeah, I think it's I think it's weird because uh, it's not every day you hear of a champ fighting a contender and a champ leaving to go train somewhere else. Yeah, I, so I think true. yeah, I thought that was really odd and I thought that said a lot about what they thought going into the fight and I thought Usman may have may have known something like that Gilbert is no joke. Gilbert's been beating me in the sparring, so maybe I should go somewhere else to try to hide some of this stuff. So I think that shows a lot about what Gilbert Burns actually was capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I think Masvidal is the toughest fighter <laughs> in the division. Um, but I just don't see that. I think that, that Kamaru does well to stay out of range, uh, not get clipped, wrestle him. Um, he'll grind him out. And uh, taking a fight on six days' notice on the other side of the world is gonna 
it's going to be exhausting. And I think once he survives, to, if if Usman can make it out of the second round, I think it's he's just going to comfortably dominate the rest of the fight. So I have Usman comfortable decision, fifty forty five or whatever it was, or whatever it was you said. I agree with maybe a maybe a ten eight round in there, but uh, that's how I see it. Mm-hmm. I think that. And I don't really think Masvidal wins. I know he beat down so he was good at the time. But other than that, Nate Diaz is not really the fight he was. And Aspirin not really looked good in the UFC. And it was six seconds, so it's hard to... Yeah, so I think, yeah, like you said, I mean, those three fights were incredible. But they none of those guys were at Usman's level. Um, mm-hmm. Let alone on six days' notice. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I'm looking forward to this card. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time and thanks for jumping on here. Um, looking forward to this card and uh, and man, let's uh, w- let's do this again sometime. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Of course, man. All the best. Um, stay safe. Don't catch anything. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, so let's not get sick. Yeah. All right, man. All the best. You too.